Cranky Geek Fall 2021 show is possible thanks to our sponsors Google, Agora, Daily, Dolby IO, Element, Intel, and Ring Central. See the links in the description for more information. Hi. So, uh, my name is Andrea Jeanberg. I'm an engineer at Dolby. I'll be talking uh, today about how can you can uh, put your own uh, custom media processing pipeline into your web application using uh, WebAssembly. Uh, uh, I want to share our experience in this area. We actually did this. Uh, I hope uh, I can provide some information that will be helpful to uh, people who can uh, who want to do their own uh, media processing. I will be talking about audio uh, and I will be focusing on uh, communications use case because again that's uh, that's the area that, that I worked on. Uh, if people want to do video, if, uh, if you want to do uh, cover other use cases, you may f find some useful information here, but it won't be as uh, immediately applicable. So uh, fortunately, I had a, a previous presentation about WebAssembly, so those who watched it will have an idea about what it is. Quickly, for our uh, purposes, it's a, it's a compute engine for the browser. It's a virtual machine that runs inside the browser, uh, standard, uh, runs in all major browsers. It's controlled by your page's JavaScript code and interacts with JavaScript code. And it's a, it's a kind of a low level a virtual machine. So it's optimized for fast uh, computation, byte buffer operations, arithmetic. Uh, and uh, I don't actually have to write the low level code yourself. It's uh, designed to be compiled from uh, high level languages, especially these so-called native languages like C or C++ or Rust in, as in the case of the previous. And uh, our particular use case is uh, Dolby IO, our cloud product has a communication service uh, which is based on WebRTC and we provide a client SDKs for uh, developers for uh, desktop, mobile, web platforms. And the other thing that we wanted to use, the actual uh, processing pipeline, Dolby Voice. Uh, so these are our uh, processing uh, algorithms, uh, um, uh, our, our codec uh, and a, a network protocol that runs on top of RTP. And uh, we currently support uh, on uh, for, from the client side, desktop and mobile platforms. You will notice no no official web support here, and the implementation languages are C and C plus plus. So obviously, we want to combine these two technologies. So when you're using the Dolby IO SDK, you can have the special Dolby Voice processing in your in, uh, and covered for uh, desktop and mobile. We want to do that in the browser as well. So first thing, we just need to run our algorithms in the browser. Obviously, without that, we, we can't have it. And WebAssembly, we choose this uh, as a technology because it has good performance for these use cases. So arithmetic operations and byte buffer operations are exactly what you want to do in a media processing pipeline. And it also has a good real-time characteristics. No garbage collection means your virtual machine isn't stopped, uh, which, which can be a problem for real-time operations like audio processing. And yeah, we can compile C and C++ code. So we, we have our um, pipeline uh, code in C and C++. We can compile that to WebAssembly. We use mscripten SDK, which is, which is uh, the open source uh, tool for that. So uh, very nice. We have the we have the code. We can run it. We need to now integrate it with the SDK. So this this has two kind of major issues. We need to we need our uh, WebAssembly code to communicate with the server, and we need to integrate with audio. So we need to capture microphone and play play it back on the speaker or headphones. And uh, kind of restriction or what I, what I'm going to be talking about are solutions that are supported on all major brow browsers. There is certainly 
optimizations that you can make with using browser specific technologies that may be mentioned in in next talks like web transport but uh, this is like the baseline that works across the the, the big browsers so First problem, network communication. We need to send and receive RTP packets. And WebAssembly as such cannot send or receive packets. It can only communicate with the JavaScript code. And the JavaScript code, because we're in the browser, we also have no API for uh, sending and uh, receiving arbitrary data over UDP, which would be our preferred transport. Uh, WebRTC Audio does send RTP packets over UDP, but it's limited to standard codecs, standard processing, so uh, not useful for us. And normally, web applications use HTTP, HTTPS, WebSockets to communicate with servers. But there, we run into a problem uh, that it's all based on TCP protocol, and this has this kind of head of line blocking problem, uh, which means that if uh, packets get lost or reordered in the network, the TCP layer will uh, retransmit and reorder before passing them to, to the uh, higher layers, increasing latency. And that's not what we want for our uh, pipeline. We want to receive the data as soon as it's available, even if it's out of order, if, even if some, some of the data is missing and then deal with that in our code. And luckily, uh, there is a mechanism that allows us to do that in the browser. This is the WebRTC data channel. Uh, part of WebRTC, you can send arbitrary binary data as messages, and it has an unreliable mode, which does not have this head of line blocking problem. So we solved the problem on, uh, of a uh, network, so we can start thinking about a first solution so we use this data channel for the network. For audio, there's an API called script processor node, which we initially tried because it was the only API that was available in all browsers. And that uh, processes, uh, that, that allows you to uh, uh, process, run audio processing code, but in the browser main thread in the main event loop. So this gives you a simple lightweight solution with no additional overhead. Uh, a slight problem, script processor node is deprecated. It has been deprecated for some time. It's still supported in all major browsers. It's likely to be supported for a while yet, but the bigger problem there is because we're running everything in the browser main thread. That, that means that uh, any JavaScript code which runs uh, long enough can preempt audio and result in a, a nasty sounding glitch. So we don't, we don't really want that. What we want is a multi-threaded solution, which will run fine in, even in a busy uh, application which, which runs lots of JavaScript. And so what do we do about the audio? There's an API. There's a multi-threaded API called Audio Worklet that allows you to run your uh, audio processing code in a separate thread. And it's uh, it wasn't supported in all browsers when we, when we started, but now it's supported in all major browsers. Uh, it, uh, there, there are restrictions to what you can do in, in your code in the, uh, in the audio worklet. And these are of uh, two types. So one thing is that you, there are some operations that you can't do, like timers, like you don't have a global object, so no access to uh, wall clock, for example, uh, which was a bit of a problem for us. And the other problem, uh, maybe a bigger problem, that you have no control over the uh, underlying buffer length, so you have a strictly limited time budget which, in which you have to run your code, uh, which you can, again, not control. And this also may, may be a problem. So it, in some cases, all your worklets may not be suitable for running at least part of your media processing and maybe all of your media processing code, depending on depending on how uh, it's uh, structured. And so uh, I mentioned threading. So how do we do threading? Uh, well, C and C++ code, most uh, media processing code is multi-threaded and our code is uh, multi-threaded. Uh, and in C and C++, you have this model where threads operate on shared memory. In JavaScript, you, you can also do, in the browser, you can also do multi-threading. 
but normally threads are isolated and they communicate over message channels. Uh, so these are two very different threading models. And uh, actually mscripten can compile multi-threaded C or C++ code using this pthread emulation feature. So to provide this shared memory, it uses something called shared array buffer and atomics. And these are not always available. They're not supported in all browsers, but also they're subject to additional security restrictions because they're uh, vulnerable to specter and meltdown um, uh, uh, security vulnerability. And uh, that that imposes uh, an additional uh, restriction on the on the web application. It must be cross origin isolated. And uh, on top of that, uh, mscripten has no support for the audio workload thread. So it would actually take a, a lot of hacking to add that in. So instead, we opted to have our WebAssembly code be single threaded to change it. And uh, so we so arrived. Yeah. You, you changed the implementation then from multi-threaded okay. to single threaded for that. Yeah, yeah. So so okay. it's it wasn't it wasn't that difficult because like the core processing is just uh, um, in a way uh, it can be run uh, if it's run in a single thread then then you can just kind of replace uh, mutexes with no ops and stuff okay. like that and uh, uh, it's it's basically algorithms so so it wasn't a, a huge deal but it means that some things that could natively run concurrently is now run serially. Yeah, and so we kind of arrive at this at this multi-threaded solution. We have three threads. We have the audio worklet thread, uh, which renders and captures audio. We have the we have a web worker which uh, runs the bulk of our media processing, and we have the main thread. And that runs the uh, WebRTC peer connection and the data channel, and all these threads communicate using message channels. So yeah, this is this is something that works. It does have a few problems though that that need to be solved. And uh, the first problem is garbage collection. Now I mentioned WebRTC doesn't actually do garbage collection, but it's controlled by JavaScript code, and this it's JavaScript code that actually uses these message channels. Messages are objects, so exchanging lots of messages potentially means creating and discarding lots of objects and uh, uh, potentially frequent and long-lasting uh, garbage collection cycles, which if they uh, happen to, to uh, be too long, they, they again cause audio glitches and artifacts. And so one thing you can do about that is optimize memory allocation especially that a lot of the data that you're going to be transferring over the message channels are going to be uh, buffers or array buffer types. Uh, and th uh, there's a, a buffer transfer feature in the uh, message channel that you can actually circulate these buffers instead of copying and discarding, then you can, you can move them between threads. Uh, and that solves a lot of your problem. It solves uh, the worklet uh, garbage collection because that's, that's more optimized for real-time performance and it greatly alleviates the worker one so these uh, garbage collection cycles still happen uh, they can last up to hundreds of milliseconds but they're uh, fairly infrequent and the other thing that uh, you can do because if you do if you if your worklet runs but your worker stops you suddenly stop receiving your audio uh, you have nothing to play back so if you just directly drop to silence and then if you get new audio, you start playing it back. The, it generates glitches on these two the discontinuities at the end. So you can apply some algorithm to, to make this uh, uh, less, uh, less harsh. So you can kind of uh, try to, try to uh, make it sound better in, by, by the code running in the worklet itself. And the other problem that you can have is uh, message channel performance. Uh, you exchange lots of messages. These messages are relatively big. So how do uh, message channels perform? Depends on the browser. So in Chrome, they're very fast. In, uh, for example, Safari, they will, they will hammer your CPU if you, if you don't do it right, or if you, even if you do do it right. <laughs> okay, and the next 
problem is with the WebRTC data channel itself, our perfect uh, messaging, uh, our perfect communication channel turns out to be not so perfect. One, as I kind of showed on the diagram, it works from the main thread only. So that's, that means that uh, JavaScript code can uh, stop your packets to it from, from arriving on time, and then you can get lots of packets immediately, which is something that uh, the network also does. This is this is Jitter, so it just gives you extra Jitter, and you need to have Jitter. Uh, you need to be able to deal with that in your in your processing stack. And the other uh, problem is that it employs a congestion control algorithm. So when you have a sustained packet loss of, from our experience, about twenty percent, uh, it starts behaving very poorly. It starts buffering data. You get very, very big latency. And even if the uh, packet loss goes away, it does not uh, recover or, or does not recover quickly enough. Uh, so you have a broken data channel. So you either restart it or you use an alternative that that's only available in some browsers at the moment, like maybe Web Transport, which will be talked about in the uh, in other sessions okay uh, so to sum it up it's 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 a lot of effort uh, as you as you can probably guess you or, or you, you may you may get from this there are a lot of problems that you have to deal with is it worth it well obviously the the actual benefits depend on on your particular uh, media processing pipeline uh, for us, uh, first thing, we were able to get better quality for things like noise reduction, for example, than standard WebRTC. We were able to reduce load on the server side, and some of it is because we kind of offload some calculations to, to the uh, user's browser. But not only that, but using a custom codec allows us to optimize for certain use cases, like use less bandwidth or uh, have a computationally cheaper mixing of audio for conferences. So uh, so that saves us money uh, in the cloud. And for some features, uh, you get better responsive because you don't have this round trip that you kind of activate or change parameters of this feature and then it goes to the server. And uh, like we have spatial audio now. That's uh, be, This feature is not ready. So well, we have wasn't not, uh, not ready for uh, public uh, consumption yet it's in late stages of development will be uh, we will make it available probably early next year but we do spatial audio on the on the server now it's in it's in public beta we uh, hope that it, it will be uh, more responsive for things like virtual reality in uh, when we when we actually get to wasm and if you're interested in in uh, listening to how uh, Dolby does spatial audio. You can uh, experiment with the server-side version of it as well. So I would welcome you to join our public beta uh, of the Dolby AO uh, spatial audio uh, program. Here's the link. And that's that. Cranky Geeks Fall 2021 WebRC event as possible thanks to our sponsors. Dolby AO, the API of sight and sound. Google and WebRC.org supporting web real-time communications. Agora, the real-time engagement platform. Daily, build communications into any application. Element, use the matrix open protocol to support real-time collaboration. Intel, offering a scalable open source media server. And Ring Central, revolutionize your communications with the Ring Central APIs.